As Barbara said this morning, the more you know, the more you don't, the more you know that you don't know. There are so many things that are happening in this nether world behind our backs, things that happen that we are not aware of, and that's going to be more or less the subjects of our next two presenters. Fritz Springmeyer, coming to us from Oregon, has spent 20 plus years researching what's been going on in things that most people, not this crowd particularly, but of course most people really have no clue on in the area of influencing actions of people with various types of mind control. He has so much information it's almost incomprehensible. You wonder how much, how anybody put together that much stuff in a 20-year period. One of the books that I have of his is Encyclopedia Size, and that's only one of whatever, 10 or 20 that he's put together. So there is a lot of information for him to try to cram into the next 55 minutes for you, but he will have a workshop, of course. So welcome for the first time here at Global Sciences, of course, another new find, Fritz Springmeyer, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Where were you when John F. Kennedy was assassinated? Do you remember how you felt? How old were you? What were you doing? Where were you when the Challenger exploded? Do you remember? How did you feel when you saw the pictures of the children that were killed at the daycare center uh, at the Oklahoma City Federal Building? Do you remember? These are trauma memories. We remember them distinctly. They are indelibly etched into our minds. However, how many of us know the lie that was programmed into us at each of those traumas? Now I realize that most of you don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm getting there. See, I'm not challenging your memories of those traumas. Each of us remember those traumas very distinctly. However, the problem is, is that we don't know the lie that it was attached to each of those traumas. In fact, most of us have never even considered that the conspiracy killed John F. Kennedy in full view of this country for a reason, in order to program us a lie. We've never asked ourselves, why didn't they quietly poison him and make it look like a natural death? In spite of John F. Kennedy's good front of being healthy, JFK was a medical basket case. So why didn't they try to take advantage of his natural weaknesses? So we've got two facts here. The fact is that they killed John F. Kennedy in full view of the entire nation. And the other fact is that we still have a trauma memory associated around that trauma. However, we do not understand, most of us, how they programmed in a lie to us through that trauma. Now those traumas that we have just discussed are very mild compared to the type of traumas that we're going to be discussing today and in the workshop tomorrow in the afternoon. I'm here to tell you about trauma-based total mind control. This is a type of mind control which turns a, the victim into a puppet, a slave. This is a type of mind control which is so horrendous that it dehumanizes a person to be a, uh, a robot, an expendable piece of machinery that they can throw away. And the problem is, is that this mind control is essentially totally undetectable. 
The things that I'm going to be telling you today are going to affect you and your children and your grandchildren. And I don't have enough time up here in 55 minutes or an hour to give you uh, much more than just scratch the surface of what I have to tell you. But I do want to be able to, in this first hour, to tell you the issues and then also uh, expose you to our literature, our information that we have that you can obtain that covers those issues so that if you want to obtain more information on this, you can. Today I'm going to give you some important keys to some of the important mysteries in your life. Everyone loves a treasure hunt. Today you've hit the mother load. This mind control pertains to many of the things in our life. Why are so many people being abducted by UFOs? Why do things keep going wrong in our government? Who is running the world? How do we protect ourselves from someone who's an intelligent agent of the New World Order? How do we protect ourselves from deception? These are all issues that relate to mind control, and they are the type of issues that I give answers to. What would you like to know about the uh, New World Order or its mind control? Or perhaps the subject bores you. If you don't know where you're going, how will you know when you get there? Where is this nation going? Where are we going with all these UFO abduction experiences? I'll tell you, we are headed toward total mind control. And I'm giving you this talk to motivate you, to help you, to inspire you, to inform you. Now I'd like to do a little exercise. Look at the person on your right and look at the person on your left. Now I'm not doing this to instill fear into you. But the reason I wanted you to look at the person on your right and the person on your left and then yourself is because one or all of you may be under this total mind control and not even know it. But I'm not saying this to instill fear into you, but I'm trying to motivate you out of your complacency. Because after I found out about this horrendous mind control, which is being carried out on such a grand scale, that my life became insignificant compared to the suffering of the millions of victims. And that's why I've dedicated my life to stopping this mind control, or doing as much about it as I can. But I can't do it all by myself, and nor, nor can I succeed with my co-author, Cisco Wheeler, back there. But we need all of your help. <clears throat> now, this has been a great conference. There's been a lot of great speakers. But if I was to sum up this conference, I would sum it up as saying mind control and disinformation. What do I mean by disinformation? Today, people don't understand what disinformation is. One needs to go and, and study, which I have done, how these intelligence agencies that disseminate disinformation how they operate, and what kind of disinformation they put out. A very good example of this is MI5 and MI6, British intelligence. Maybe a lot of you are aware that British intelligence created American intelligence, and British intelligence is extremely powerful. Before World War II got started, the British had infiltrated the Nazi spy apparatus so that every German agent that was recruited into the Nazi apparatus that was spying on Britain had to become a double agent. 100% of the German 
agent spying on Great Britain was a double agent for the British. And anyone who joined those spy cells had to become a double agent or they got dropped, so they kept the continuity. Through those double agents, they disseminated disinformation to the Germans. If you will study the type of disinformation that they fed through the, uh, those German agents, you'll get a good idea of the type of disinformation that's being disseminated to you all through double agents. Some of them have been uh, up here as speakers. <clears throat> you may think that disinformation is simply passing a lot of lies. No. Disinformation has to look like the absolute truth, but you slip in a little poison with it. So some of the, uh, these double agents that the Nazis had received very uh, big decorations by Hitler. In fact, one of these British agents, double agents, received the highest award that Hitler could give him while at the same time he received the highest award that the British could give him. Kind of interesting, huh? An example of how disinformation works. You, you give 99% true information and it's that one little piece of disinformation that's the clincher. So through their spies, they fed the Germans the range of their naval radar, but they understated it. Well, the Germans were excited to get any information on the British radar, their naval radar. When the Bismarck sailed, and you're familiar with the battleship Bismarck, because their intelligence agencies had been fed this shortened range of the naval, uh, British capabilities of their naval radar, that one little piece of disinformation, they made a big mistake, and that mistake cost them the Bismarck. So see, this is how critical it is to understand how a speaker can get up here in front of you, he can give you 95% good information, and it's that 5% poison that he's going to give you that will be the clincher. It's very hard to understand, for most of us to understand how disinformation comes about. Now, my co-author back there, she said, Fritz, you're not going to hold back on these people, are you? Well, for those of you who don't know me, if you watch that movie Braveheart, when I watched the movie Braveheart, I realized that's me, you know? I've been trying to fight these people, and I've got the same spirit. No, I'm not going to hold back on you people, and I don't think you want me to hold back. You want the whole truth, and I'm going to give you the truth as best as I can. And some of you who don't know may be, may be wondering who is this Fritz Springmeier character and so unfortunately I should I need to just take a minute and tell you about myself. Why am I in a position to be up here telling you things that other people can't? I think it goes back to several generations before me. My great-grandfather was a very insightful, wise, intelligent, good man. He lived in Germany before World War I, and he saw, because he was insightful, what was coming. So he escaped in a wagon underneath some grain, sacks of grain across the border into the Netherlands because he saw that a world war was coming at a time when most of the war world was, was just having a good time. And I think God honored his uh, his, the, the desires of his heart not to be involved in all the warfare that he saw coming to Europe because he, he had five sons and they had a lot of sons and not one of his sons or grandsons ended up fighting in a war because their age staggered them so that, that none of them ever got drafted. That's pretty amazing. And uh, then uh, if we look at my father, my father was, is, he's still alive, he's an uh, ex exceptionally brilliant man, uh, some, uh, you would call him a genius, and as I grew up, he allowed me to ask a thousand questions, you know, I sat there and pestered him the whole day asking him questions, and he would answer them, and he never got tired of that, and uh, he may, he tried to, to take 
where he was at in life and his capabilities and help the world. And my mother, uh, she was another brilliant person. They, my mother and father grew up on farms. They were farm people, they were good people. They were not associated with the system at all, nor have any of my relatives, um, except for one of my dad's cousins uh, in World War II because he was a genius, worked on the Manhattan Project. But my father has basically been a technocrat for these uh, people that run the world, and he tried to make a career out of going to third world countries and developing their agriculture. And so I got to see, I got to see some of the movers and shakers of the world, and I also got to see how the, the people, the, as David Adair called them, you know, these bureaucrats, how they treated the technocrats that worked underneath them. My father was sent, uh, sent by the uh, U.S. State Department aid program uh, to Nepal when I was a child to develop the Nepalese agriculture. And he painstakingly typed up a big, massive report of their state of affairs all over the country, which he traveled on by foot and, and by jeep. And, when he sub and a plan to improve their agriculture, and they had lost it within two weeks. And that was back before there were photocopy machines. So I saw how the, I t saw time and time again how the people that are running this world just played around with people like my father who sincerely wanted to improve this, this world, uh, this planet. Um, I, from, from, uh, not growing up in this country and not get, coming to continental United States until I was uh, 11, have an outsider's view of this country and what's going on. And you know, when you're in a situation, if you can step aside and look at it from a distance, you see it differently. And so there's a lot of things that I see about this country that maybe other people can't because I have been in 33 countries and I've uh, been a world traveler and, and I, I, I see things from a different perspective. Plus, when I was in Nepal, we didn't have television. I spent a lot of my idle time reading Encyclopedia Britannica. And I went to a private school that when I came to the United States, I was two years ahead of the, the kids in public school. So that gives you a little bit of background of why having been a truth seeker, who's devoured uh, books every day and, and have interviewed countless numbers of people and done all kinds of research. That gives you a little bit of background as why I'm up here um, telling you some of these things rather than somebody else. What I've seen at this conference so far, there's been a lot of things that pertained to my research on mind control. Our Japanese speaker last night, he talked about blood pressure in, in the head and how he went out to find out. It was so frustrating for me this last week, I tried repeatedly to get a chance to tell him why he didn't find any information on that when he went out there um, looking in the medical books. Because see, I have been spending time researching mind control and what these people are doing and there's a cerebral spinal fluid as well as the brain, uh, the blood's, uh, blood pressure in the brain and a lot of other things that he's not aware of that have been suppressed by these people. This is information that they have suppressed and the reason why is, is because there's only a few men in the world that know these things and they're using it to enhance their programming abilities, their mind control programming abilities. So there's a, there's a flip side to this. Some of the, the things that I'm going to tell you about today are horrendous, but the flip side of it is, is that some of the, some of the things that, that the New World Order and the Illuminati know, if they were put to good use, would be fantastic. I have repeatedly seen that these people are giving us the crumbs of technology and information. In fact, they go to, uh, there's a, a conference, Bill Gothard seminars, where they teach spiritual principles for Christians. Their programmers go to these conferences. Their programmers, their mind control programmers know how a person can make themselves into a great spiritual being 
they know this far better than, than most of the Christians, but they use this information for evil. They're able to take and, and set in uh, th uh, things within the life of a person to prevent them from becoming the person that they could have. So there is a good positive flip side to this, but if you, if you saw what I've seen, it would make you angry that these people are taking what could be used for the elevation of mankind and they're using it to enslave us. Now, as I go through this, I, I'm going to uh, touch on a, a whole variety of things because like Dean was telling me, he says, my audience knows a lot about the Illuminati. The thing of it is, is, is that the information, the level of information that I'm putting out about the Illuminati, unless you've been in touch with my information, you haven't heard it before because that's a much deeper level than what the people are telling you. So I need to just touch on some things so you see the type of information that you can get and this all pertains to the mind control. <clears throat> so we're going to run through uh, real quickly here some overheads. Around this date, uh, Admiral Stansfield Turner, of the, uh, who was head of the CIA, went before a congressional subcommittee and he admitted to them that yes, the CIA is carrying out mind control on countless numbers of unwitting American victims. And he even went so far as to say the basic methods that they use in this mind control, hypnosis, drugs, and torture. And around this period of time that he was uh, addressing the, the Congressional Subcommittee, why the New York Times had this article, here they mention a couple names of, of um, uh, these are mind control programmers, Dr. Ewan Cameron and Dr. Lewis Joy and West, they were uh, examples, two examples of mind control programmers. If we go back in history, if we go back in history, you'll see that uh, um, our governments are just carrying out uh, methods of control that were um, written about long ago. Now, those of you who have been associated with the Army realize that they have a lot of pamphlets and, and books for their people. This was a handbook for chaplains, and inside this handbook for chaplains, they uh, tell all of the re religious groups that are recognized by the U.S. military, and one of those groups that's officially recognized is the Church of Satan, so that if you are a satanic priest in the Church of Satan, you are exempt from the draft because you're a clergyman. And Anton LaVey is a, happens to be one of the mind control programmers that I have been exposing, and you'll see a picture of one of his slaves in here. In this book, in this handbook, for chaplains, they will tell you that there are three uh, degrees within witchcraft, and that is correct. The, uh, those first three degrees um, make up the anarchy level of the Illuminati, and, um, and then you have a hierarchy level within the Illuminati. Last summer, I went out on speaking circuit of 14 major U.S. cities, and there was a tape made a professional, uh, professionally made tape in a television studio where I explain uh, charts like this, explain a lot. So I uh, strongly recommend that uh, you get that videotape because it gives a, an excellent overview of a lot of things. But for instance, you'll have this diagram explained. And I go into the uh, top 13 Illuminati bloodlines in uh, that tape, I also have a, a book. This comes from a book, The Top 13 Illuminati Bloodlines. This pertains to the mind control because these bloodlines learned about these mind control techniques many centuries ago. These are the movers and shakers of the world. And um, for instance, the Rothschilds, their secret genealogy tr traces back and this is inside information. You're not going to learn this 
uh, reading a book. This is inside information. Their genealogies go back to Nimrod. So these are some very powerful bloodlines, and uh, they have learned a lot of con techniques for controlling long ago. And when you learn who the bloodlines are, it totally changes your view of history. Now, for instance, Grant and um, my co-author back there, Cisco, who I brought out of the Illuminati, her father was a programmer, and, um, and parts of her were used for programming. Her great uncle, her dad's uncle, was the head of the US military during the Vietnam War. General uh, Earl Grant Wheeler, and he was a descendant from Hiram Ulysses Grant, uh, and, and Ulysses Grant was of the Collins bloodline and of the Delano family bloodline, two very powerful bloodlines, and you may have thought that he was just a, a common ordinary person. Um, so th to understand what's going on, you really need to understand these bloodlines and that's why um, uh, I encourage you to get the book that we have back there, the volume one book, the top 13 Illuminati bloodlines. These are just some representatives of those bloodlines. And uh, these are Illuminati members that I'm showing you here that are representatives of the different bloodlines. And uh, the DuPonts, for instance, have been in charge of um, a large portion of military industrial complex, they have produced the gunpowder for all of our wars. So every war that we've had, they've gotten incredibly rich. They also are into a lot of the chemicals. Every day you use chemicals that came out of DuPont uh, factories. The Freeman family and uh, Gaylord Freeman, head of the Priory of Zion, and uh, this is the Kennedys. Here we see JFK at the Great Pyramid. It seems like a lot of these Illuminati types have made a pilgrimage to the Great Pyramid. And uh, here's Anton LaVey. See if I can get him up a little bit so that the camera can see a little bit. This is Anton LaVey with one of the members of his church, Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr. was part of Rat Pack, which were in uh, working with the intelligence agencies and were Satanists. And um, one of uh, his slaves, James Mansfield, is there uh, kneeling down before uh, um, Anton LaVey in a, in a satanic ritual. And here was the first presidential model sexual slave that they allowed the public to see. Uh, this is Marilyn Monroe. She was, uh, both James Mansfield and Marilyn Monroe uh, had sexual relations with John F. Kennedy. And uh, here I believe that you can see her switching uh, personalities. When, you, when I start talking to you more about how the mind control is done, uh, you'll understand what I mean by switching personalities because they create programmed multiples where they get a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde effect. And uh, here's, um, this is Winthrop who's uh, um, said to have the largest porn co uh, collection in the world. And uh, the, the mind control slavery relates to the um, porn, the type of porn that they do too. Um, this is Guy de Rothschild, very powerful man. Uh, his bloodline will have the Antichrist, and that's his son, David. And here's uh, uh, the Russell family, and a representative of the Russell family. And here you see Bill Clinton. This is a hypnotic, hypnotic induction for a mind-controlled slave. He hypnotically in, in, inducts them. And uh, then you have uh, William Huntington Russell and Samuel Russell, which um, tie back into your slave trade. 
So see, these people, have, these Illuminati families have been involved in, in slavery for a long time. And they've been involved with mind control techniques for a long time. A lot of what they did with the black people was for purposes of, um, they were very skillfully using trauma and divide and conquer against the black people when they enslaved them. And uh, I don't have time to go into uh, all, the, all the ideas behind what they did to the black people, but just leave you with the idea that what, uh, the, the reason that they brought over the black people like they did in the ships with so many dying, and the way they separated them from their past and everything, it was all use, utilizing mind-controlled techniques. And this is uh, some other Illuminati uh, bloodlines here. The Lee family, Lee Ka Shing, uh, billionaire in Hong Kong. Some others. Hitler was of the uh, Rothschild bloodline. I found out that uh, Scotland was very important to all of this, and I just highlighted some of the Spotty Scottish clans that were involved in the uh, Illuminati. And for some, some of you that need to see this, because you, you wonder if satanic ritual abuse does occur, I got this out of a museum, and it's written in, the, it's an oath to Satan that's written in the blood of the person who made the oath. And this is very standard for people within the Illuminati. And uh, this all relates to how the mind control is done. Because a lot of the, you can't separate the rituals, uh, the satanic rituals, uh, from the mind control programming. They dovetail in. But there's, but they're also using alien themes in the mind control, too. And again, I will explain this, uh, explain this in the videotape. It, it's a castle in Belgium, an important castle uh, of the Mother of Darknesses, which is a rank within the Illuminati. This is the front entrance to it. Um, the Illuminati have set up objectives, OK? And then those are broken down into components. And then they, they use different parts of society to bring those objectives about. They want things to happen as if, if they're happening naturally. From debriefing people that, that have heard planning sessions where the 20-year the and the 30-year and the 50-year plans of the Illuminati were explained in detail, one of the major components to their plans is, is they want everything to happen as if it's unfolding naturally. So where the mind control slavery is so important is, is they have salted their people throughout all levels of society. There is no religious group. There is no philosophy. There is no political uh, um, group that can't be infiltrated with their mind controlled slaves. Here's an example of another uh, objective. And you can see how they've broken it down into components. And then their people that are salted throughout different areas are uh, um, bringing about those goals. This is explained in the videotape, so I won't explain it. But it shows the type of thing that I go into in my uh, in some of my literature, in some of my books. And uh, this is uh, the Illuminati occult area boards that when they went to federalize, make federal regions, they copied the, the boundaries that the uh, Illuminati occult area boards already had. And uh, again, this is the type of thing that we talk about in the videotape. And you may say, what does this have to do with mind control? It's because health care and control of grains and, and all of these different things that we see being controlled behind the scenes, the, the way that they are able to control them is with these programmed multiples. And that's why people are saying, well, I, I can't believe that there's a conspiracy because I don't see it. No, it, it's being very subtly done behind the scenes. 
Here, uh, Alice Bailey, who was connected to these people, um, was uh, head of Lucius Trust and wrote uh, quite a few books, uh, started 140 New Age groups. She writes, years ago I said that the war which may follow this one would be waged in the field of the world religion. Such a war will not work out, however, in a similar period of extreme carnage and blood. It will be fought, fought largely with mental weapons and in the world of thought. It will involve also the emotional realm from the standpoint of idealistic fanaticism. This inherent fanaticism found ever in reactionary groups will fight against the appearance of the coming world religion and the spread of esotericism. The coming struggle, struggle will emerge within the churches themselves. She's, she's talking about mental weapons. Now she doesn't spell it out here, but what she's talking about is, is the mind control that I'm talking about. And the name of her book's very appropriate. It's the externalization of the hierarchy. What was done in secret in these secret societies that, that tie in with the Illuminati, what was done in secret 100, 150 years ago is being externalized into society. And part of the way that they're doing it is through uh, the, the mind control that's got an alien uh, script to it and um, through uh, people that are um, uh, seeing things and dreams and so forth. You know, one of the ways, see my father was, was just naturally smart, but there weren't enough naturally intelligent people for the New World Order types to take advantage of. If you understand what they need to run their computer systems and to do the type of research that they need, they needed uh, to have some trick to get enough geniuses to really move rapidly forward with what they wanted to accomplish. And they discovered that if they scarred the brain stem they could create somebody with a photographic memory. And so uh, a lot of your people out there that are geniuses working for the system are mind-controlled slaves that have their brain stem scarred as a child. They've been, they've been given a photographic memory and, uh, <clears throat> and they've got programming. Now how do they uh, uh, control these people? Well they are releasing technology at a rate that they have um, decided upon. And uh, it's, they, are, they release that, if you're a mind-controlled slave, a lot of the ideas um, that you will get will come as dreams, okay? <coughs> They're controlling the various Christian denominations, various Christian religions, they're controlling the New Age movement, uh, your, your New Age prophets that are seeing things. Where do you think this stuff is coming from? And, and that's why I was so pleased to see uh, Raylan Rusbacher tell you her own personal story about how she discovered that the things that she had been channeling were actually being channeled through her via mind control from the intelligence agencies. This is, uh, it doesn't show up very well on here, it's such a beautiful picture, but it's the inside of the House of the Temple of the Supreme uh, com Command of the Supreme Council, I mean, of the uh, 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite Freemasonry in New York City. The House of the Temple here, uh, uh, one site for uh, programming, uh, one place for the uh, Grand Druid Council to meet in a room there. Uh, here I'm at a programming site. <coughs> and this is the Presidio, and uh, this is real near the Presidio, the Palace of Fine Arts, and um, where Illuminati have done rituals. Here's some more pictures from the area. You'll notice that the Sixth Army has a, the satanic hexagram within a circle with the anarchy, satanic anarchy A inside of it, and a lot of their staff are Satanists. This is some more sites around the area used for programming. This is uh, on the Presidio where the Illuminati have had some 
rituals inside of there. And in the distance here is Alcatraz, which has been used for uh, ritual programming. This is Tavistock, which is a site that's been used for mind control programming. Uh, Rothschilds have used Tavistock quite a bit. Here's a couple uh, programmers. Um, this is Michael Aquino, who's he head of Temple Asset. He's a mind control programmer. And I don't think that he's got his staff in his hand there in the picture, but he oftentimes carries a staff. That's uh, staff is like a cattle prod, and it will give you electroshock. There's been quite a few books coming out recently about the mind control, but they're all pretty vague. So I encourage you to get the volume two book that we have. Um, and the title to it is The Illuminati Formula Used to Create an Undetectable Total Mind Controlled Slave. Now, how are they doing this? Well, they're using natural, uh, natural uh, things, uh, natural functions of the brain. Some of you have probably been driving along the road and you've been talking to your wife and just driven automatically. See, the mind can work on, in two different, two different things. What you're doing is, is you're hypnotically trancing out on, on your driving. Maybe some of you have been driving and you just, you went from point A to B and don't even remember driving. You just it, put yourself into self-hypnosis. There's different altered states that the mind can go into and they're very familiar with these. The mind also has the ability to disassociate. You know, if you, if you say, uh, uh, some people, if they say something that's wrong and then you try to correct them later on, they say, well, no, I didn't say that. Their mind has to disassociate. Or you go on a trip and you remember the good things but forget the bad things. Okay, this is disassociation. The mind can, has a natural ability. Now, let's say that you're a soldier in a war, and this has been going on for thousands of years to soldiers in wars. Um, let's say your buddy, uh, for instance, has his arm blown off and his guts are blown out, and it's a horrible sight. The mind protects itself. And if you look at it on a timeline, and at this point in time is that trauma, what, if the trauma is severe enough, what the mind does to protect itself, it builds amnesia walls around that trauma. Well, they, the Illuminati learned this long time ago, and so what they do is, is they compartmentalize the mind. They, just, they take a small child and they just traumatize the heck out of it and split the mind and build all these amnesia walls between all these traumas. The, the worse the trauma, the better, because the better the trauma wall. So the most horrendous traumas you can possibly imagine are the ones that they want to use. When you've splintered a, uh, the mind up into many pieces of disassociated pieces, then you can go in and pull that piece up to the front of the mind, and you can, can construct out of that piece of memory whatever you want out of it. Now you remember that some people have said that uh, the human mind is like a huge computer, and if you got all the computers of the world together, in some ways, your mind would excel. You would be all of the computers in the world. You've got a fantastic computer here. Well, you know how a computer can section off memory. You know when you turn on your computer, if you need to reboot it, it reboots out of memory that you can't get to. In order to make a functioning computer, the big hurdle that they had to jump over was to be able to create memory that you couldn't access. Well, that's what they're doing with the mind. They're splintering up your, your memory into thousands of little pieces. Uh, my co-author on a couple books on the mind control, her mind was split 30,000 ways. Now, you take those pieces of the mind, yeah, tremendous amount of trauma. Think of the amount of trauma it takes to split the mind and then multiply that times 30,000 times. Tremendous amount of trauma all through these people's lives. So you take that piece and you can make that piece of the mind into anything you want. Now let's say they take one piece and they show up films and through the programming they make it into a particular personality. Well, What they want to do is, is they want to make the most perfect front for their slave possible. And so 
they will test a slave, uh, they will test a victim that they're going to make into a mind-controlled puppet. They'll test them when they're a small child. And I go into the techniques in the book as to how they can test as to what your abilities are. They use EKG tests and they know how to determine what your, uh, what your abilities are as a small child as to when you would grow up. So they plan out your head, uh, they plan out your life ahead of time. They say, this one will be a doctor, this one will be a lawyer, this one will be a scientist working on rockets, this one will be this, this one will be that, okay? And uh, depending on what they're wanting you for, will de determine the type of programming they give you. Um, so it's very systematic, and because the movers and shakers of the world have all of the resources, basically, they can move these people into whatever field they decide for them, so they become the top of their field. Now their front personalities are very legitimate, sincere people. They don't know about the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde effect. Um, imagine yourself being a Christian minister and horrors of horrors finding out that you've got disassociated parts of yourself that are Satanists, that are satanic, that go to Illuminati rituals. We recently had um, a minister um, fly in with his wife. He heard me speaking last summer on my lecture circuit and when he heard me talk about the Illuminati he realized there's nobody else that understands the Illuminati or the type of programming I have that can help me. There are very few people out there that understand this. That's why he came to visit us. That's one reason why I needed to talk to your people, Dean, about the Illuminati is because there, ever, since we have been here in this conference, there have been a number of people that have come up that have discovered that they have this kind of programming. They've come, they've gotten our material just since we have come to this conference. And there's other people probably that will learn it too. And, and so it gives people that are victims of this some confidence that there's somebody out there that will understand them when they, uh, when they hear that um, there's a few people like myself that really understand in depth uh, what the Illuminati's all about. Now, this is, um, comes from a book. I, I took it from somebody else's book, but this is uh, somebody who's trying to develop artificial intelligence for computers. He's extremely brilliant. He understands the mind perhaps better than anybody, and he's showing the processes of memory and motivation. And I'm just throwing these diagrams up to you to show you that the natural mind is not one monolithic thing, but it's many components. And the Illuminati understand what those components are and how, the div how to divide the mind from itself and how to control those processes. For instance, uh, if you electroshock somebody, you destroy their short-term memory you, uh, for t about 24 hours. So uh, every time that Cisco was used, for some, uh, some purpose, uh, let's say she was running uh, drugs for them or being used as a sexual slave or whatever they were, they were using her for, on a daily basis practically, they would electroshock her. What that would do is, is splinter your short-term memory. Once they get you programmed to where they want you, then, uh, then they will uh, delete your memory of having been used in these things. People that are on sensitive uh, 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 in government projects, if you are in charge of something that takes a classification, you're going to be under mind control. Don't you think that they're, uh, they're smart enough to want to control uh, their secrets? And this is, uh, was taken at Bethesda, which happens to be a programming center, um, but it's showing uh, mul the brain's PT scans of, of, of multiples. And you'll see that from, from when one personality holds the body to another, we've got totally different PT scans. The mind of a multiple uh, personality, and they now call MPD DID, um, just recently changed that, I think, to throw, uh, throw some confusion into things. 
But when you look at the PET scans, they're different. If I try to impersonate a different persona while I'm getting PET scans, my brain will look the same. The programming is layered in, and this comes from another one of our books back there. Uh, Cisco did amazing drawings where she invited her different alters, her different personalities to, to work together on putting down on paper what they were seeing because they had no talk programming. And the programming that's, that is so sophisticated, in the three hour workshop, I'm going to try to go through step by step and give you more of the details of how it's done. And of course, you've got the volume two book which explains it from A to, A to Z too. But there's so much to talk to you about I mean, how they're using implants, and on and on and on. Uh, it, it, and I'd love to tell you everything that I, I, I know. But as they go in and, and splinter a person's mind into thousands of disassociated pieces, they have to put those pieces together in some fashion that's going to be useful to them. So then they're structuring. And as they build the structures, they like to use structures like this, like this is an, an infinity type structure so that the person being programmed, uh, they get a feeling like there's no beginning or no end to the programming. It gives them a hopeless feeling. But the type of sophistication, the level of thinking in this programming is so in depth. Uh, this is when they're construct doing the structuring. They'll, this is the beginning of a chart showing the beginning of some structuring that they're doing. And then when the the master, finally, the programmer or the handler, finally has finished programming the slave. He will have a three ring binder, a laptop computer with pages that look like this. And, and if he wants to call up a particular altar, uh, he, he would say, uh, like, Brown Levi 2003 11A, Brown Levi 2003 11A, Brown Levi 2003 11A, that right there would be the access code to pull up a particular personality that they would want. And a lot of these personalities will not live in reality. They live in a total science fiction world. They've been dehumanized. Here's how one of Cisco's alters perceived herself. And um, they use Walt Disney movies for the programming. As you can see, this is from a Walt Disney movie where a doorknob it, it takes on life. If you show the, uh, a Walt Disney movie like this, you're creating the images for them to use hypnotically as they go in and do the behavior mo modification and, and hypnosis on that altar. And so they, this could be used to create a doorknob uh, alter within a person's mind. And as they go through the dehumanizing process, like in Cisco's system of alters, all but the front alters in her were, were, ha, were, uh, had lost their hearts. They did hypnotic surgery where they took out the hearts out of these alters and replaced them with the heart of stone. So, uh, and that's so that these people can't give their hearts to Jesus, because if you would talk to these altars and say, give your life to Christ, they'd say, I don't have a heart. I'm not a human. And, and then they've been dehumanized to think that they're maybe a horse or a dog or a cat or whatever. Uh, they build body suits out of implants. And uh, you heard about the, last night about the biochip how they're able to make a miniature computer that's the, the, you know, very, very tiny, the size of a cell or even less. That's true. And they attach these tiny, you have to understand how computers are made. All a computer is is an on-off switch. Anything that will, uh, will consistently do one thing consistently, move in a particular direction or something can be used as an on-off switch. They take carbon, uh, strings of carbon atoms, they use DNA templates. Anyway, they make many computers that are extremely tiny, attach them to viruses. Viruses have a liking for a particular part of the body. They will build a body suit of implants in, in you with these tiny computers, put in a master computer in the back of your neck, and these are just a few of the sites. Uh, these are the audio 
um, implants. There's about six different major categories of implants. You've got mimics implants, you've got audi uh, auditory implants, uh, holographic implants anyway. And uh, when they program, they layer in the programming. They use a lot of uh, some of the base programs are your alien scripts. Uh, your Alice in Wonderland and Wizard of Oz, those are very common base uh, s programming scripts. And also Star Wars and uh, Star Trek. Star Trek's a big one. Um, what are the implications of this mind control? You've heard the term paradigm shift. The implications of this mind control are so mind-boggling that it's taken me years to make what people call the paradigm shift to really comprehending everything we see, nothing is as it looks, okay? And anything that is clean has been infiltrated and, dirt, and been dirtied. It's incredible. And this is a, a newspaper article where uh, people are immigrating, uh, where they're coming into the United States from. And of course, if they put Eastern Europe up here as um, something it would be right up there probably in the top six but you see uh, Russia and China and Vietnam right up there in the top countries that are sending us immigrants these are countries that are also practicing mind control how many Spetsnaz agents have been infiltrated into the United States we're not being protected but we're being moved towards a one world government well, they will give us perhaps something that looks like this. This is one of the plans of what they want to give us. It, it looks real nice, and it looks like we are, are ruling ourselves through this world government. The problem is, is that with the mind control, they will control everything from behind the scenes. So, um, including, I had a friend who was a mind control victim, and uh, uh, one of the insiders that was trying to fight the New World Order came up to him and said, you, this was back in 1990, and said, you are a monarch mind-controlled slave. He didn't know what that meant. He said, and this insider said, as proof of who I am and that my information is for real, this was six months before the primary, ele uh, primary election in which Bush and Clinton ran against each other. He pulled out a map and it had all the, uh, all the votes for the, the final votes of the presidential campaign, the electoral college votes, and the final popular votes. And, and these men found out the same thing that I found out from various sources, James Collier uh, and his brother. They spent 20 years tracking down how the voting is rigged. I'm telling you people, uh, nothing is as it seems, and um, there are people that can come up here and stand up here and, 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 and be a lot more humorous than I, and uh, can tell you, you know, that you can vote these people out of office. There is no political system that is going to work anymore when they are d making mind-controlled slaves. And I'd love to have all of you come to my workshop because there's so much that I have to say, and it's so important, and our table's back there. Thank you. Again, uh, again, thank you very much, Fritz.